We're creating a sense that this country has a destiny in the world, a big country with a big heart committed to solving global challenges. I think young people want to lead the change that they want to see in the world. But I think young people are quite honestly fed up. There's an issue around dignity. And we have to remember that actually part of this whole process of international cooperation is to really strengthen the agency and dignity of people. I feel like youth right now really, really want to see change. The world has changed, and there's a real need for creating sustainable positive impact. One World Together is a shape venture, uh, which means it's research-based, that started at the University of Manchester. There have been critiques about the current international model of development and aid for decades. I think white saviour complex or like that thought basically means that one person assumes that they understand all the solutions and go into organizations or communities and solve it all. My name is Dr. Nicola Banks and I am co-founder and chief steward of One World Together. So I have over the past 10 years been spending a lot of time researching the problems that NGOs, we commonly call them charities. I think we've reached a crisis stage where everyone knows the existing system doesn't work. It's very short term and it's very inflexible. So when new problems arise, organizations can't re kind of um, shift their funding into these new crisis areas. We've spoken to close to a thousand uh, local activists from over 50 countries worldwide. And we there are some common messages here. You know, please don't diminish our agency. Please don't assume that we don't um, have any capacity. Please recognize our knowledge rather than your knowledge being most important. I got a bit disillusioned with kind of doing similar research that always came up with the same conclusions, particularly when NGOs and charities in the sector are also having these conversations. Existing systems of funding are just not fit for purpose. They're very expensive, uh, they're very unequal, and they are disempowering to local and community-based organisations. So they did an analysis, and of if we were to allocate the money directly to local people, local groups, local communities, you could save close to five billion dollars. Can you imagine how much you could do with five billion dollars? Something like it is 32% more cost efficient to support programs, development programs, humanitarian programs, if you support them directly, funding directly. So in other words, you get more for your money. So unrestricted funding also helps you go beyond the bare minimum to get the best. So a group of activists were brought together. I joined a, a social lab called Reimagining the International NGO, which brought me together with other um, kind of charity workers, donors, people from all, all parts of the sector. She said, look, why don't we set up a, um, an entity that really just places communities and, and local organisations at the heart of this, at, at, of the funding mechanisms, and that we would fund them directly and with unrestricted funding. So that's what led us to One World Together. At One World Together, we have like three core values with which we are operating. It's solidarity, trust and equity. A completely different approach from the usual top-down extractive methods of colonialist uh, ways. It gives flexibility, but also it funds and strengthens organizations. So organizations know they have that income regularly that they can invest in. The solidarity and the funding goes direct to local communities and local organizations, almost completely bypassing the INGOs. It's been called the holy grail of funding, um, and I think that's really clear why. We have four partners, two are in Kenya and one is in Zambia. One is based here in the UK in the northwest of England. We don't see poverty as a, a problem in other parts of the world. It's as equally resonant here in the UK as it is globally. We gave each of our partners a, a relatively small kind of initial payment of £1,500. So in Kenya, they have a school in, in one region where there's been this really long extended period of drought, which enabled them to provide school meals throughout that period. Then in Manchester, um, we gave the same level of support to a network of women's savings groups, and they sort of split it up between three of those savings groups and used it as a kind of a grant crisis um, coping mechanism in the cost of living crisis. So if there were members in the communities that couldn't pay their bills, uh, it gave them a, a way to do that. We rely on the biggest stakeholders in the world right now, the youth, 
who will be like participating and like mobilizing each other to commit to one tiny amount, but on a monthly basis. Solidarity to us is important because it shows a united world, one that is fed up, but also willing and ready to do something about the issues we face. We're really excited because students at the University of Manchester have just set up our first Students' Union Society. I think young people see they're inheriting a system that is innocent, broken. We're focused on changing, not just changing, but creating entirely different funding systems. I think we're, we're eager to do something about it, we're itching to do something about it, and One World Together provides that platform for us to do that in our own way. And I think that's why I joined One World Together, because I was like, okay, this is a business model that can actually uh, address this. This is a, a whole new business model um, that is providing really valuable proof of concept, and the team are now working to scale that venture. A year from now, I'd hope that we are much more established, not just as an organization, but as a movement in and of itself, but not only surviving, but thriving because of that unrestricted funding that they get. The potential of this being scaled across UK and across globally in several other universities is massive. I see right now, you know, the whole sector is fizzing with, with, with noise of change, with kind of the winds of change. And I think that that's, that's exciting. I want to make the case that if we're really going to tackle the world's great problems, from biosecurity to pandemic preparedness to poverty, entrenched poverty in the global south, to some of our own problems, in the end you have to understand behavioural insights. I feel like it's a massive, exciting step for the world. If this can be made into a success, which requires everyone around us to kind of join and get on board, it will change the world. Um, not just here in the UK. So if you want to become a global citizen of One World Together, we would warmly invite you to join us.